Hello and welcome to bonus video number 4. In this episode we'll cover Genetic Engineering Revisited. To that end you'll be looking over a paper by Dr. R. Babu, Dr. A. Sajina, Dr. K. Sieferman, and Dr. M. S. Reddy. This paper came out of the University of Toronto in 2003. For our first part we'll talk about different methods of gene transfer. The most common form of gene transfer is through Agrobacterium tumefaciens. This species is a soil bacteria which infects a wide range of dicot plant hosts. As part of its life cycle, it transfers a gene called the TI plasmid into its host to modify the host to make it more suitable for its growth and proliferation. Researchers have found a way to swap out portions of the DNA within the TI plasmid with genes of interest. So instead of injecting genes to modify its host to make it suitable for itself, the agrobacterium will inject instead genes of interest into the host DNA. Agrobacterium has been utilized to genetically engineer various species of dicot plants such as soybean. In more recent years, mutated variants of agrobacterium have been found that allow for agrobacterium mediated transformation of monocots such as corn, wheat, and rice. For species that cannot be infected by agrobacterium, other methods have been made. One is called the PEG method. This is a technique to fuse cells of plant and animal species together. Basically, two cells are fused together, utilizing PEG, and the foreign genes are allowed to intermix with each other. These cells are then grown out in petri dishes to produce tissue cultured plants which are then rooted and propagated through more normal means. Other methods include electroportation, another method of protoplast fusion. Instead of using the chemical PAM, electricity is used to fuse these two cells together and has been utilized in wheat, rice, sugarcane, tobacco and others. Microinjection has been utilized through the injection of DNA into meristems and cultured cells. This method is simple and can be used on whole plants without tissue culture steps, but the transformation is not stable and quickly reverts. The next method is microprojectile bombardment, or as you call the gene gun. It was called a gene gun because the prototype was a modified shotgun. It's a lot more sophisticated now, of course. To be quick about it, genes are attached to a microparticle such as tungsten, and fired at an accelerated rate into a plant tissue culture sample, forcing the genes to combine with the plant cells. The most common insect resistance gene would be the Bt genes. The Bt genes are derived from Bacillus fungiliensis, definitely butchered that name. This bacteria naturally preys on insects. They produce crystal proteins within the guts of beetle and moth and wasp larvae, depending on the strain. These crystals work in an alkaline environment only and block the gut from absorbing nutrients and mess with the insect's gut, killing it. Most of the genes are the cryprotein gene, which are utilized to create cryproteins that when ingested by the insects, wipe them out. Each cryprotein is specialized to specific species. You can see a list of cryprotein transgenic plants and their resulting resistance to different insects. This improves tolerance to different species of insect. Now I'm going to step off the paper for a second and talk about a communication I had in one of my classes talking about Bt corn in relation to European corn borer. Since European corn borer resistance in this transgenic crop is a one gene resistance, it is easy for its insect to develop resistance. And so this process has been studied to figure out how to deal with this, as resistance strains have been showing up. It was found that the resistance gene for the CRY1A gene is actually recessive. So the researchers came up with a new method to maintain the use of BT corn going forward in terms of resistance to European corn borer. This is called sanctuary in a bag. When Bt corn is planted, one third of the plants, more specifically one third of the seeds, are not transgenic for that trait. 
as a result they can be infected and damaged by the insect pest. These worms would then turn to moths and interbreed with other adult moths, keeping that recessive trait for resistance hidden behind the dominant gene susceptibility. This is how Ontario farmers who grow transgenic corn maintain that trait's usability. On a side note, the first testing of a BT transgenic plant was in 1986 with tobacco, with great success being met. And in 1996, BT crops such as tomato, corn, and cotton have been done, also successfully. I do not know if BT tomatoes are still in play, but BT cotton and corn certainly is. Now onto other novel traits being tested. First, we'll talk about plant-derived genes. Various plants have proteinase inhibitors that inhibit the production of trypsin within insects. Many of these compounds are found in common food plants, but are inactivated by cooking. Three different genera have been tested, utilizing different trypsin inhibitor proteins found naturally in plants, and have found that these traits actually inhibit insect growth within those three genera. The first gene successfully transmitted to another plant was isolated from cow pea, encoding the gene CPTI, which inhibits trypsin, and has provided control of various moth larvae-related pests and brucolid beetle. Like the BT gene, these genes only work on very specific species, and these are the primary limitations of such breeding efforts. Another gene being tested are the lectin genes. Lectins are carbohydrate binding proteins. Lectin genes found in plants such as snowdrop or garlic are toxic to insects but not to mammals. A test of lectin, a test of Galifensis nivellus or snowdrop lectin protein have found an 80% mortality rate within various insect species, specifically plant hoppers and leaf hoppers. The gene known as GNA was then isolated from the snowdrop plant and incorporated into a rice plant, granting the rice plant resistance to leaf hoppers and plant hoppers. Another test involved the incorporation of insect DNA, specifically chitinase DNA, into tobacco. This reduced the damage that tobacco budworm did, but did not have any effect on but did not have any effect on hornworm which makes sense considering that's where the genes were derived from. It worked poorer than the BT stuff, and as such, this test was discontinued. Most transgenic breeding programs now involve the propagation of existing transgenic cultivars and crossbreeding them with each other to have new cultivars that have multiple transgenic traits within it as a plan to reduce the amount of resistance situations that show up within the genome of the pest species. And that all covers everything. Thank you for watching.